Dog sledding for a vacation? Why not? Come and join us for a truly Canadian experience. Now, it's kind of like cross-country skiing, okay? So you're gonna stand on the runners that are at the back of the sled, and you bend your knees when you're hitting bumps, okay? We also, on all of the sleds, there's a brake, okay? What you do is press down on the brake and hold it hard. When the dogs are running and you tell them to stop, they know the word stop, but you also gotta hit the brake and stay on the brake. If you leave the sled for any reason and let it go, the dogs are gonna run, okay? Because they understand stop, but they don't like stop. They like the word go. The sled will Meet have a Keith Blissett, an tree. avid outdoorsman, do artist, and our wilderness guide for the next two days. Uh, none of you guys have been dog sledding before, right? No? Okay, your first time. Okay, what Johannes uh, is going to do is take you up to the dog yard. He's going to explain how to bring the dogs down. We're going to start hooking the dogs in the line. I'm going to be hooking the dogs in the line. You will be bringing them to me. Lead dog team four. <laughs> You come, come here. Come on. We're almost ready to go. We got all the teams hooked up now, ready to go. And we don't stick around now because the dogs are getting very excited. They'll start jumping in their lines and wanting to go. Go, Kimmy, come on. Hut, Kimmy, come on. Let's go. Mogami is a great wilderness area that's been known for a number of years. The first uh, person, uh, white person, of course, that made Tomogamy famous was Gray Owl with his books and things like that and living with the Indians on Bear Island in the Tomogamy area in, in the early part of the century. And of course, the Indians also used dog sleds and Gray Owl used dog sleds in that er uh, time. Uh, Gray Owl actually uh, had a mail route that ran, we're close to his mail route that he ran to over to the Quebec side to the Miskamine and back to Tomogamy carrying mail. So w not only are we dog sledding, but we're going along some of the historic routes that were used by the natives and by Gray Owl in those days. The Tomogamy, of course, is noted for its famous old growth forest and its large pine trees, white pine and red pine, and people get a chance to go through some of these old growth forests on our trips. Man, what a super morning and great weather. We were miles from the nearest road, and all that fresh air was giving us a huge appetite. We're going over a nice, nice bit of creek up ahead. Can you film me? And, uh, the trail, actually, the trail goes straight over it, but the, I guess there's a bridge out. And so we've been going over the uh, sort of a pondish thing um, to go around it. And we're not sure, but Keith's going to go over first, and we'll find out how actually thick it is. And if he goes in, then we'll go at least a little further upstream and go. Yeah, thanks, Joe. <laughs> Toilet paper? No, no, we don't have it. We just have birch bark. Mm -hmm. Okay. Birch bark and pine needles. Hut, hut, hut. Going up. Hut, hut. Actually, I really enjoy, um, you know, just being outside with other people, showing, giving them an experience that they haven't had before, and uh, seeing that, you know, you can actually be quite comfortable in the winter outside, and, and being with dogs that aren't, you know, as vicious as people think they are, uh, working dogs, they're, they're actually quite friendly. Dog sledding is one way for me to get into the wilderness in the winter, and take even my photography equipment and painting equipment with me. And that's how it started. But then I realized that it was a great opportunity to teach tourists uh, how it, dog sledding was in, in the old days and to be able to take them into the wilderness. We run about six to eight, up to 10 school groups a year, uh, primarily high schools. And they, they come out and we teach them winter camping. We obviously teach them and give them seminars on the dog sledding. We take the kids out dog sledding. We take them to winter camps and they stay overnight. And th that's probably my most enthusiastic group is the kids. It's a bit hairy when they go downhill and pick up speed, but not too bad. 
Hut came in. Come on, let's go. I use hut for go, but most mushers uh, use mush. And mush comes from the French Canadian word marche, and the English people couldn't pronounce it properly, so they started saying mush. Uh, French Canadians were the ones that adapted the uh, Indian toboggan and the Inuit idea of, of using dogs and introduced dog sledding into bush country. And they used to go between the fur trading posts in what was called dog teams, trains. They'd get about four or five together so they could break trail. Now after traveling all day, I was dreading the thought of setting up a tent in the snow. Right, well, you don't have to. An original Let's prospector go. tent with wood stove is already set up. They're gonna all probably just lie down and sleep now. However, Keith and Johannes did have a few chores for us. Hey, Karst, if you can drop your anchor, it should hold after the tug lines are off. That goes around the tree and back on itself. Right. Okay, I'll sh no, no, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So yeah. this goes onto there. Right. Okay. On. We're gonna attach all the dogs on bush lines, take them out of the uh, gang lines, put them on the bush lines and take their harnesses off and get them bedded down for the night. Next, we need water, so get ready for some exercise. A foot and a half into the ice, and we finally strike the wet stuff. And where there's water, there's fire. And we usually start the fire. And we start with birch bark. We throw it in our stove. This stove will keep going for about three hours. And then we just throw in our kindling that we pre-cut here on top of the birch bark. This is softwood. We add first to it. And it should only take us a few minutes to get this flaming. This, this is my home. And about a half an hour to start getting some heat out of this stove. And it doesn't take long to get a fire going. Especially when you're coming in here and it's 20, 30 below. The first thing you want to get is a nice warm fire going as soon as you can. Excuse me, I'm gonna add a little bit of hardwood in. Now that we're all settled into our camp, one of the locals came over to say hello and for a free meal. This is Whiskey Jack, and he'll eat almost anything. Speaking about eating, our hardworking dogs can't wait for a well-deserved meal. So we fed them kibble with water, uh, hot water soaked, and now we're going to feed them a mixture of chicken and beef. So they'll get about a pound of meat besides their kibble. Okay, I'm doing Hello? Yeah? Give a flashlight. You probably won't need it once your eyes adjust. Now, I thought sleeping outside in a tent in the winter was only okay, for well, the foolhardy. But it's not as cold as you think. We're not back in an hour. We've been eaten by a bear. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was 40 below, and we had a couple from England that came over. And uh, in the middle of the night, it, w it got so hot that the woman was out of her sleeping bag and and wanted the stove turned down. So what we actually turned the stove down. We've had no complaints of people freezing. It's, it's uh, actually the other way around. Uh, here we have our water delivery here. Water, water delivery, delivery girl? Half of this, my jacket was stuck in it. So how was the bath? Oh, it was invigorating to say the least. You washed in the ice hole. Mm -hmm. Was it nice and warm? Yeah. Uh, it wasn't as bad as we thought. It was, it was pretty cold though. Now, Keith claims to be a gourmet cook, so if you were hoping to be served up a scrumptious dinner in the Tamagami wilderness, you're in luck. Homemade pasta is now being served. Is this homemade pie? Yeah, it's yeah. homemade pie. It's good homemade pie. Okay, yeah. now trust me, guys, it's going to get hot. You guys all tucked in for the night? Pretty much, Grandpa. I think so. What do you mean, <laughs> Grandpa? <laughs> Good night, oh, Keith. Gosh. Good night, Yo. Good night, Karst. Good night, Lax. Good night. So who's for pancakes for breakfast here? What? Maple syrup. Right. Pancakes with maple syrup. They're good. Are they? Compliments to the chef. OK, great. Time to get moving. But first, Keith will explain how to harness the dogs so we can head back out onto the trail. Do you have nice dreams? Pull it back so it's way behind the collar. Pull the collar up so it doesn't, the collar doesn't bother them. 
Then all you do is take one paw and they help. See? He puts his paw up. Okay, come on. Come on, Snoop, the other side. Mm -hmm. There, and the harness is on. I mean, when do you ever you get a chance to do something like this? It's just I was, yesterday when we were going around, along, I looked in front of me and I had dogs pulling my sled. And it's just a weird thing when you're used to seeing dogs walking around the city and I have a dog at home, but they're actually working and, you know, you're kind of takes you back to the way they used to do it. Hug, 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 hug. Two weeks ago, I had a person who was in his 70s, retired, brought his two daughters who were in their 40s, and we went for three days and he was in very, very good shape and, and said that he, all his life he wanted to try this once. I think my mom would just love this. She was very jealous that I was coming up here. So I would recommend it to anyone, no matter what their interests, their likes or dislikes. I think anybody would enjoy this.